Henry Ford made his fortune with a horseless, gasoline-powered carriage. In 1903, there were barely 11,000 cars in America, driven by the few people wealthy enough to afford them. But Ford said he wanted to build a car for the multitudes. <coughs> In 1908, the Ford Motor Company began producing the Model T. Faster than a horse, sturdy enough to withstand America's primitive roads, and cheap enough for the working man. The car was an instant success. Ford sold more than 10,000 Model Ts in its first year of production, bringing in more than $9 million. Henry Ford was right. Americans wanted an automobile. But now Ford had a problem, keeping up with skyrocketing demand. Ford was convinced that uh, as fast as he could make them, he could probably sell them. So Ford and his engineers by 1910, 1911 are beginning to stress very heavily, making efficient the process of production. But building the car by hand still took hours. Time, Ford said, loves to be wasted. Finally, Henry Ford found the answer. Inspiration, he later claimed, came from an unlikely source. Henry Ford says that he got the idea for an assembly line from the Chicago meatpackers who would uh, string up the animal on an overhead conveyor and take parts off the carcass and so, if you can disassemble a carcass, why can't you assemble an automobile? In 1913, the modern assembly line was born. Within a matter of months, the time needed to produce a Model T was cut from over 12 hours to under two. Ford slashed the price of the Model T and sales quadrupled. By the end of 1914, almost half the cars sold in America were Model Ts. Mass production, Ford proclaimed, was the new messiah. And Ford himself became an American icon. He had driven the automobile into the heart of American life. But in the 1920s, the man who had made an automobile for the American consumer stopped meeting consumer demand. Ford's competitors were offering the public a variety of models to choose from, and they were discovering ways to create consumer demand, spending millions of dollars to advertise. But for years, Ford refused to change the design of the Model T, and he hated advertising. He insisted that his cars ought to be able to sell themselves. Sales of the Model T plummeted. Henry Ford could not ignore the bottom line forever. Finally, reluctantly, he stopped making Model Ts, shut down his plan, and created a new car, spending more in one week to advertise the Model A than he ever spent advertising the Model T. Soon, Ford had recaptured the lead in total car sales. But for the rest of his life, Henry Ford hated what had happened to the industry he had helped build. We are no longer in the automobile business, he grumbled. 